Hello everyone and welcome to Exam School 2018 live from the Tenfold uh, Center. Uh, we are going to be taking through some of your questions. We're going to be helping you with paper one which you guys are writing tomorrow so a little bit stressed out. Um, but we are going to be running through some of your questions and we are going to be giving away some prizes. I think that's pretty exciting. Um, speaking of which, here's Lungi. Hi Phil, how are you? I'm very well, thanks and you Lungi. Well, thank you and a big hello to everybody at home. I hope you guys are tuned in and I hope you guys are enjoying the show. As Phil said, today we are tackling physical science paper one. Remember that all of the questions that were sent in were sent by your peers on our Facebook page that is Mindset Tenfold page and on our Facebook sorry guys so that's where all of the questions were sent through so if you guys want to win some cool prizes remember to also send through your questions so that we can give you a whole lot of amazing prizes but for now I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna hand over to Phil uh, well thanks Lugi um, as, as I said earlier we are taking your questions the questions that you guys sent through to us um, through our Facebook page and uh, we're actually gonna be chatting to some of those callers but first what I've done is for our first question, just to get the ball rolling, is I've had a lot of requests to do questions from the supplementary paper. Now, guys, if you are practicing papers, and that's where you should be, the supplementary papers tend to be a little bit more difficult and some strange questions come out of there. So I'm going to be taking a question from the 2018 uh, February, March supplementary paper. And here it is. It's about electrostatics. It's got uh, Newton. It's got forces and vectors involved. So really cool. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so question one for this evening. Now, I've got two point charges. Uh, P and S are placed a distance 0.1 meter apart. The charge on P is 1.5 uh, nanocoulombs, and on S is negative 2 nanocoulombs. Okay, now the reason I say nanocoulombs is that's an abbreviation for this. So if you see nanocoulombs in your exams tomorrow, please don't panic. All it means is times 10 to the minus 9. And there we've put it out in a diagram. Now, I always say to learners, when you're doing physics, very, very important, especially if you're starting to deal with this part of physics, you've always got to draw yourself a little diagram if you're not given one. Decide on positive directions. This is always something. And then, this is the real key, is take the information from all of those sentences because I see a lot of learners kind of freak out when they see all of these sentences. And I need to condense all of my information onto my diagram, and that just makes it a lot easier to read. So what I've done is I've taken those two charges, P and S, and I've placed them on my diagram. Now there's a third point charge, R, with an unknown positive charge. Okay, so that's pretty important. This thing is positive. Okay, uh, it's placed 0.2 meters to the right of point charge S, as shown in the diagram below. Okay, so now this is actually pretty exciting. We've got multiple charges which are going to experience uh, a force on each other. And um, now here's the problem is there's going to be multiple forces all over the place. And this is really, really important to get right. Now, for those of you that have been paying attention to our live shows, we like to say what's going to count the most in your exams, how to help you with these things. Now, guys, uh, they're always going to be asking these definitions, and that's how this question kicks off. Now, state Coulomb's law in words. Now, Coulomb's law applies to charges which are experiencing a force in an electric field. Now, it's actually quite nice to try and memorize Coulomb's law by using the equation, where the force experienced by a charge is directly proportional to a product of two charges and inversely proportional to the distance between their two centers squared. Now, there's another way of stating it, and I've seen it as well, is that uh, force experienced by a charge is directly proportional to that object's charge and the strength of the electric charge, but I don't particularly, uh, sorry, the strength of the electric field, but I don't particularly like this. I really like to condense it into this one. So force is directly proportional to the product of the two charges, and this is the forces between them, and that the force is also inversely proportional to the distance between their two centers squared. Now you can actually use the equation to remember the definition. Okay, so now they are gonna be looking for all those parts to give you that definition marks. Guys, these are free marks. They are not going to say, oh, okay, well, learn this exactly with the words. I know a lot of teachers say, you know, you've gotta get the words exactly right. We are looking for individual places to see that you've got the product of the two uh, charges and the inverse, please don't say indirect, 
inverse proportionality to the distance between their two centers squared. Okay, so now this is where things get a little bit more interesting. It says draw a labeled force diagram showing the electrostatic forces acting on R due to P and S. Okay, now this is a little bit tricky. Now, force diagrams and free body diagrams are very common things. Now, the cool thing about a force diagram is you can actually draw the object. Free body diagrams, you're meant to represent it with a dot. Now, we've got to say, what are the forces acting on R? Well, let's take a look at our diagram. Just going back up to our diagram. Well, R is a positive charge. Now, that's something that I noticed when, when we've posed this question before, people have kind of ignored the fact that R was a positive charge. So what is S going to do to R? Well, I think, and this is just a cool way of prototyping it, is that S will pull to the left because there are opposite charges that will attract. What about the effect of P on R? Well, P is also a positive charge, so it will repel it. So there we have it. We've got these two forces, but now that I can't put in my exam paper. Let's actually put this down. Now I'm going to my force diagram. P is going to be pushing away. So now you're allowed to do this. So you can say P R. Now that's saying the force of P on R. And that's really important because you've got to say what the force is coming from and what it's on. So force of P, that's the one making the force on R. Okay, what about the other side? Well, we saw that S was attracting it. We don't know what the size of the force is, is yet. So we can say force of S on R. And there we go. So we can say force of S on R. Notice how they both end in R. It's got to be forces specifically on that. Now, this is the reason that I chose this question. Wow, um, I just want to give you a little bit of a moment to soak this in. So calculate the magnitude of the charge on R. So we are looking for Q, R. If it experiences a net elec electrostatic force, so this is F net is equal to 1.27 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. That's a very small amount of force, but that's the combined net force to the left. Now, we're told something really interesting. It says, take forces directed to the right as positive. Now, if you go back to your force diagram over here, that allows me to do something very special. That tells me that I can say that to the right is positive. That means that the force of PR is positive, and the force of SR is negative. Okay, so that's really important. So let's just redraw that quickly. So we've got force of PR on the right, and the force of SR to the left. And we know that force PR is going to be a positive force, and that's going to be a negative force. Now, here's where things get really interesting. Just to see if you guys were actually listening in those Newton 2 lessons earlier on in, in grade 11 and 12, we're going to add together these two forces. So what we're going to say is that PR is a positive force, and we've got a negative SR force over there. Now all we've got to do is plug in the correct equations and numbers, and this is where things get quite interesting to me, because how do I actually start to rationalize where these forces come from, what they're acting on, but still take into account the positive directions? Now F net was a number, and that number was to the left. So what we've got to do is put that in as a negative number. So I've got negative 1.27 times 10 to the minus 6, and on the right, how do I calculate a force, but using Cal Coulomb's calculations? So Coulomb's equation starts to deal with our K, Q1, and Q2 on the top here. Now remember that we're looking for Q of P, and we had a 1,5 Newton force over there, sorry, 1,5 nanocoulombs over there. And at the bottom, we've got the distance between those two. And if we subtract from that, again, Coulomb's equation. Coulomb's equation is going to be used if they ask you the definition. That's your clue to start looking for it on the equation sheet. Now, we're going to get a little bit cramped here. So 
I hope you can bear with me. And we've got QP, it's a little bit tight. Right, and then we've got the distance between the two. That's a lot of maths on one screen. Okay, so now uh, please, please don't get too tied up before you start taking a look at this and going, oh my word, how do I get QP out of there? Let's just simplify things very, very slightly because it's a lot of writing on the screen. Some people are watching us on small screens. So um, let's just slow this right down and let's simplify things. So we're nearly at our answer and here it is. So let's start taking a look at what actually happens there. So that simplifies down to 150, which is quite a nice number multiplied by charge of P. And then 450 was the other one of Q of P. Now, if we simplify this, that gets us 300 P on this side, uh, 300 times the charge of QP. And that's actually quite simple right at the end there. I hate it when I say that though. Did you find it very frustrating when, when teachers said this is really simple? Yeah, I know, this kind of looks very complicated. Um, but before we get too carried away, let's just get to our answer and then we're going to go through how can I make this slightly less scary for myself when I'm sitting in that exam tomorrow and it feels like I'm starting to sweat bullets and <laughs> I, it, it really feels like that in the, in the moment. I, I don't know if you felt the same way during that. Uh, Always. Oh. It was so, just the case. Now, the way that I approach these, these exam questions is really, really important. One of the things that I've got to do is consolidate my information, see what I've got, and then start to move from there. Because um, when I start one of these, and a lot of people don't know this, um, science teachers are not, not genius in their IQ levels. I, I know I'm not. But one of the things that I do know is that I've got faith in the method. Draw your picture, set a positive direction, and that's going to count later on in the show as well and then start to consolidate your stuff into one little diagram because I don't know about you, when I start to see long word sums, and that was my worst part of math, like long words, I, I just see information everywhere. Start to consolidate, see what I've got, ignore all of the other words because that's gonna make life very, very difficult. And then what I can start to pull out of that is I can start to say, okay, well, I don't know the charge on, on QP and Okay, so simplify things, please, as much as, as possible. I know that not everyone's going to be a nuclear physicist. Yeah. But we want you guys to do really, really well. But um, we, we're coming up to an ad break, and I think after the ad break, we've got our first caller, and that's really, really exciting. Exactly. Um, so our first caller is going to be up after this ad break. So for now, everybody at home, go ahead and drink some water and fill in myself. We'll be back right after this ad break. <laughs> 